of each one's understanding is flooded with light veils fall off clarity comes your people are built up equipped edified and jesus is glorified i decree that nobody lives here the same way they came whatever does not look like the finished work of christ is terminated and we rejoice that together we see the manifestation of God's glory in this last days like never before. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today... I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to have all of you in the service again today. We also want to welcome the Aquai Bomb State community connected to the service by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquai Bomb Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you friends and brothers and sisters. Help do me the favor tonight, call a friend, a family member, a loved one, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. I also want to ask the social media community to help us. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. Let's lighten the dark places of the earth by helping us share the video, put them on as many groups as possible, and let's get the word around the world. We want to welcome all our campuses around the world for joining this wonderful service tonight. Guys, we love you. We're glad to have all of you in the service. Is there anybody in the house excited tonight about the world? Can we celebrate God's word with a shout? Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self and your phones too so that you can share the video quickly. Get as many people as possible. Put them on all your different pages. Let's get in the word of his grace. Glory to God. We've been looking at Brother Paul's unique revelation of identification and we've been examining truths, our realities in Christ Jesus. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we began to establish that Brother Peter, you know, um, accepted that Brother Paul had a particular insight, a sophia, uh, an insight, a wisdom in the writings of the Old Testament. In the way brother Paul communicated those truths. And Peter said they are hard to be understood. And he said those that are unlearned and unstable. They rest with those scriptures to their own destruction. We also established that Jesus, his teachings were in tandem with what brother Paul taught. And we've taken time to see the teachings of Jesus. And how that brother Paul used more verbiage, more vocabulary in bringing out those truths, those revelation truths in scripture, you know, in the epistles. We we'll also said that the epistles are post-resurrection realities of all that Jesus taught in a more expansive way. In John chapter 16 verse 12, look at what Jesus said in John 16 12. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever you shall hear, that shall you speak. And he will show you things to come. So we took time to look at the fact that the theology of Jesus, you know, and the, the things Jesus spoke about were the same things Brother Paul talked about. The spirit, which is Numa Aletia, in the Gospels, when Jesus was teaching about the Spirit, is the same thing Brother Paul was talking about the Spirit, but Brother Paul used another verbiage, apodexis, 
to explain the same spirit. We took time to look at all the activities that Jesus said that spirit will bring. He will guide you into all truth. He will teach you all things. And we saw how that, that's the same thing brother Paul talked about. That when the spirit comes, there will be total, all information will be disclosed. There will be no closure. There will be no mystery. All mysteries will be demystified. And brother Paul talked about that we have received the spirit of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And then we began to say the same way we saw the spirit and how that the spirit of God is the same spirit that Jesus spoke about that brother Paul talked about. We now travel to Moses' theology. Now we established that Jesus taught from Moses because in Luke chapter 24 verse 27 when he met the two gentlemen on the way to Emmaus and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He expounded unto them the things concerning himself in all of the scriptures. So we established that what Jesus taught was from what Moses taught. So what Moses will call the spirit is exactly what Jesus called the spirit and is exactly what Paul called the spirit. Then we went to Moses' verbiage because in the book of John, chapter 5, verse number 46, For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. You would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Next verse. Look at it. It says, But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So Moses wrote of Jesus, meaning that there's consistency in the theology of Jesus, Moses, and the epistles. We saw that Moses was the first person who used the concept of heaven and earth. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then we took time to look at the words that brother Moses used. Because now after he said God created the heavens and the earth, he was not referring to a planet. Because later on in Genesis 1, he gives us the story of the creation of the planet. And that's why many people get it wrong. So we began to say, what is Moses' heaven and earth? Remember in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, he says, And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now so the earth was without form and void. The word tohua bohu. It means nothing, nothing. Then he now says darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God, the ruach, the ruach of God, which is Jesus' pneuma aletia, which is Paul's apodexic, which is the same thing they were talking about, moved upon the face of the darkness. Then God said, let there be light. And John says, the light was the life of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Bereshit. I K, all right, in the beginning, Bereshit, I K in the Greek, in the beginning was the Logos, the thought, the idea, God's thinking pattern, in the beginning was the word, the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Then we now began to say Jesus, when he spoke about light, he spoke about light as a spiritual principle, light darkness and we took time to look at the scriptures so that we are not looking at things like an archaeologist but we are looking at things as people who are spiritual you know what is very popular or common in the church world is that when people die we assume that they have gone to heaven the impression they give is like heaven is some enlarged mortuary where dead people are assembled but that's not the truth because there's no teaching in the Bible that says people go to heaven when they die. And we've been looking at all of this on heaven. And we saw that Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And when he was saying that, he was saying that to a man that was on earth. 
we also saw that Jesus said, whatever you on earth bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then we took time to look at other things, because we said the kingdom is the word basileo, which means the reign or the rule. So kingdom is not a place. Kingdom is the reign or the rule of God in the hearts of men. Now we also said light and darkness is in the hearts of men. Because we took time to look at a lot of scriptures. And I will advise you if you are not here, get all the materials we have taught up until now. Acts 7.55, talking about Stephen, his own account of heaven. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. He is on earth, but he looks up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He saw the glory. Now when we say he looked into heaven, he was not looking into the sky. So that was a revelation. Look at Acts chapter 9 verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. He was on earth, but light from heaven was shining on him. We saw that a voice came from heaven and they heard it. Now we are seeing light shining upon a man on earth from heaven. Acts 10, 11, And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. As it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. So he saw heaven opened and he saw things coming to him from heaven without causing a natural commotion. The things were coming to him from heaven and didn't hit somebody. They didn't break a story building somewhere. I mean the building, which means we're not talking about a physical reality here. Acts chapter 10 verse 16. This was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So a man is praying on earth and he is seeing things moving in and out of heaven within his environment. Without traveling, without going anywhere. The question now will be, from all we have seen, do you still think heaven is a planet? No, it can't be a planet. It must be a strange planet if it's a planet. That means that planet then must be right here on earth. Because everyone we read had encounters with heaven right here on earth. They didn't have to die. Paul uses the term heaven 20 times. 20 times. Don't forget we said in the four gospels, it is used 141 times. Don't also forget that we said Jesus used it 113 times. And brother Paul used it 20 times. Fewer than the book of Acts. Now anytime you see Paul use a word, it's either he doesn't use it at all, or he uses it less frequently than others. Or he must have replaced the word. It's either he uses it less than others. Or he doesn't use it at all. Or he has replaced the word like apodexis. Which replaced pneuma aletia. Alright. With something in his inside. So he must have replaced it. That means... Just like Peter said, Paul had a Sophia, an insight from God with which he explained the same things in much more clarity. Now the book of Hebrews has heaven five times. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 about the death of Jesus and what he did with his blood. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Now, to appear in the presence of God for us. If you look at the way he pens his word, the writer of Hebrews, he uses heaven as the opposite of the material world. He uses heaven as the opposite of the material world. And that is how the writer of Hebrews 
uses his own heaven. For example, Hebrews 10, 34. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. For you had compassion of me in my bones and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance, opposite. He uses heaven as an opposite of the material. Look at Hebrews 12, 23. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, which are written where? In heaven. Look at that Hebrews 12, 25 to 26. Hebrews 12, 25 to 26. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Next verse. Whose voice then shook the earth. So he spoke from heaven and his voice shook the earth. This can be natural. Are you following? This can be natural. But now he has promised saying yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Again, what is done in heaven is seen on earth. What is done in heaven, the impact is felt on earth. Which means heaven and earth from the writer of Hebrews are together. James uses the word heaven twice. You can write down for further study. James 5.12 and James 5.18. Now, it's interesting here because heaven here is an atmosphere. James was talking about the atmospheric heavens. He is also not asking you to swear by heaven. The atmosphere where we get rain. Let's look at it. James 5.12. James 5.12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your ear be ye and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. The heaven is talking about here is the atmospheric heaven, like people do. Uh, 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 uh. Okay? That's swearing by heaven. All right? Why are you laughing? <laughs> you used to do it, eh? All right, James 5, 18. James chapter 5, verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Which heaven gave rain? Atmospheric heaven, all right? Just like I said, if Jesus was going to come in the clouds, and, there is, and the clouds decide to rain, that means Jesus will fall down. Isn't it? Because when, when the clouds gather and, and they start raining, they, they evaporate. Abi, They evaporate. The clouds disappear. If the clouds, the Bible says you shall see him come in the clouds, it's natural clouds. And by any chance, rain falls that day of his coming, then it means Jesus will fall down. We may have to use a ladder to bring him down in a hurry. Before the rains begin. Alright. So keep that somewhere. <laughs> keep that somewhere. Heaven therefore will be used for what is above the earth. Yet in the earth. Just like you have the physical heaven. Heaven and earth. Heaven is above the earth. Yet in the earth. Physical. So the same thing. The reality called heaven is above the earth. But is in the earth. So we're going to learn what the heaven is from the physical description. Please pay attention. We're going to learn what the heaven is from the physical description. The physical heaven is above the earth. But remember that the physical heaven is part of the material world. It's part of the material world. Okay? Okay? So, both the heaven and the earth in the physical, they are all material stuff. They are all matter. They are subject to matter. 
And that becomes for us a hypodegma. You remember hypodegma? This is a hypodegma or a pointer. The physical heaven and earth is a hypodegma to the heaven and earth that was communicated by Moses. A hypodegma. All right? Now, when we say heaven and earth, it's a distinction. Yet, the heaven we are referring to is the atmosphere of the earth. The atmosphere of the earth. So that way, we will understand heaven and earth when we are talking about man. So the way it's used in its geographical way will give us an idea how it is used referring to man. The way it is used in geography. Earth, the ground, heaven, the atmosphere that leads into the outer space. Yet, the heavens and the earth are somewhat together because from the earth you can look up and see the atmosphere into the clouds. In fact, when the skies are clear, you can see into the stars. In fact, sometimes you can see shooting stars. Is that true? You can see shooting stars. All right? You can look up and see as far as possible. Sometimes you even see the aircrafts in the sky. You see them right up there. And you even see beyond the aircraft. Because heaven and earth are together. They are together in the sense that heaven is above the earth. And from the earth you can look into heaven. Are you here? From the earth you can look into heaven. Now, remember we are not doing geography here. But we are using little bits of the physical as a hypodegma to communicate spiritual reality as always it is with Jesus' parables and sometimes with Moses' teachings and even sometimes with brother Paul. When he will say, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, then he will use natural things to communicate spiritual realities. Now, stay with me. So, look at Peter using the word heaven about four times. First Peter 1 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved where? In heaven for you. So, are you watching? The inheritance is reserved in heaven for you. But what kind of inheritance? Incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away. Meaning it is not matter. It is not matter. And it is reserved in heaven. So that heaven also must be a heaven that is not matter. Only immaterial heaven can carry immaterial realities. You can't say an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fair not away, reserved for you in the atmosphere. No. If it is heaven, then the heaven Peter is talking about must be an immaterial reality that is carrying immaterial realities. First Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed and not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you. With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into the gospel sent down from heaven first peter chapter 3 verse 22 first peter who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of god angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him talking about jesus and these angels are here. The angels are here. And they are made subject to Jesus in heaven. The angels are here. And they are made subject to Jesus in heaven. Second Peter 1.18 And this voice which came from heaven we heard. When we were with him in the holy mount, they heard the voice that came from heaven on earth. All right? So let's quickly think, just like the atmospheric heaven is right in the earth. 
the atmospheric heaven is right in the earth yet separate and distinct the atmospheric heaven is right in the earth yet it is separate and distinct why because it is higher than the earth and the earth is the material base of the atmospheric heaven is higher and yet it seems like it's the one that controls the weather as it were the atmosphere in the earth that's how it is said in the natural and this will help our understanding now let's look at the word heavens and i'm going to use king james version again just for the purpose let me use the word heavens okay you'll find it in the old testament 120 times the word heavens as plural 120 times in the four gospels four times in the book of acts two times give me acts acts 234 for david are you all paying attention for david is not yet ascended into the heavens but he saith himself the lord said unto my lord sit down on my right hand for david is not yet ascended into heavens but he died David died, but he's not in heaven. So heaven is not where dead people gather. For David is dead and gone, and is not yet ascended into heaven. Acts 7.56 And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, Stephen, and he was on earth. Now let's look at Paul. He uses the term heavens two times. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So this heavens he's talking about is not matter because it houses eternal things matter cannot be eternal <laughs> matter cannot be eternal this platform here is matter maybe in another 10 20 years it won't be here cars are matter that's why once you buy a car you start using it starts depreciating Television screens are matter. Your shoes, your clothes matter. That's why you can't wear one cloth for 50 years. No matter how economical you are. In fact, the more you wear it, the faster it will get out of place. We have a house in the heavens. Eternal. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things he said he went into heavens and he feels all things talking about the church hebrews 1 10 is talking about the atmosphere hebrews chapter 1 verse 10 and thou lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of thine hands this is talking about the physical earth he calls the atmospheric heavens part of the earth and he was quoting from Psalm 102 verse 45. Thou Lord in the beginning had laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. Talking about the atmospheric heavens. Psalm 102 45 is where David was quoting from. 102 45. Now look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we are the great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now, that is, you know, the atmospheric. Yet he uses it for the atmospheric heavens in Hebrews 1.10 and Hebrews 4.14. Look at Hebrews 7.26. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher 
than the heavens. Spiritual. Hebrews 9.23 Talking about the heart of man and he says things in heaven. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens he's talking about the heart of man should be purified with this. Because the purification is the heart of man. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Then you can read this at home. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 5. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 5. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 5. 7, 10. Chapter 3 verse 5. 7, 10, 12, 13. Second Peter chapter 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, 13. Now the challenge we have with the word heaven is that whilst is the same word used for the atmospheric heavens, which is always a part of the earth, it is also used for a spiritual principle, which is also a part of the earth. That's why there's confusion. It is the word used for the atmospheric heaven, which is part of the earth, and it is also the same word used for a spiritual principle which is part of the earth. That's why many people get confused. So when the earth is used for the material where people live, then it is also used for a part of it where people don't live as it were. The earth is used for where people live and it is also used for a part of the earth where people don't live. The skies, the atmospheric heavens. You know, with all of the technology, people like Elon Musk want to go and live in Mars. They've done their visit to Mars and they are thinking of many things because the challenges are much. They are thinking of, okay, how are we going to have agriculture? How are we going to plant things in Mars? It's true that the earth there in Mars looks like the earth on the ground, but it does not have the same composition. So they are thinking scientifically. What do we do? Because... God never created for man to live outside space. Man was to live on earth and he made the earth habitable. Are we in the building? Now, so that will let us see how man is also referred to in heaven and in the earth in the same place. So let's look at the word heaven in the Hebrew. The word heaven is the word shamayims. Shamayims. Shamayim. S-H-A-M-A-Y-I-M Shamayim Of course, when you talk to the Hebrew man And you say heaven, he looks up Shamayims Because Shamayim Is from the word Shane Shane S-H-A-N-E-H Shamayims Is from the word Shane It means high Lofty The word Shane means away from here and sometimes invisible. Away from what you can see. Heaven. Shamayims. So that means the term heaven is descriptive. The term heaven is descriptive. It definitely will have to be used in context. It will have to be used in context. That's key. Now, do not ever get to the risk. Listen, everybody. If you were right in finish and look up. All right. Don't ever get to the risk of saying heaven is not a place. And you say it authoritatively. And totally without explaining properly what you mean. Did you hear what I just said? Don't ever get it, fall into that trap. Of saying heaven is not a place. Authoritatively and conclusively. Without taking the time to explain. It is explanation that will make people arrive at the understanding. Because if heaven is not a place and Christ is there. Then that doesn't make sense. If Christ is a definite person. And he is somewhere then it must be a place. Huh? Are you following? 
So you must use your words rightly. Question. Is heaven a place? Yes, it is. But not a place as some think. That's the way to answer. Yes, it is. But it's not a place as some people think. That's the way to answer it. So let's get back to Moses' writing now. Genesis 1.1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth. In the beginning, that is Moses' explanation of man in two worlds. Man in two worlds. The seen and the unseen. So man must always be viewed in two worlds. The seen and the unseen. And so now, he typifies that by heaven and earth. Created in the same location. So that you never think it is a distance as it were. Heaven and earth. Therefore, Moses uses heavens and earth as operations. He uses it as operations or principles of operations in the same place. He uses heaven and earth as operations or principles of operations in the same place. Please pay attention. Look at chapter 1 verse 2 of Genesis and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness verse 5 and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning we are the first day these are spiritual terms then the next thing is he talks about the waters. Look at verse 8 to 10 of Genesis 1. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. Are you watching Moses' intelligence? Next verse. And God called the dry land earth. But remember the dry land was covered with water under heaven. Because they were together. Then the waters were gathered. And God commanded dry land to appear. At the appearance of dry land under heaven in the same environment. God now called the dry land earth. Are you following? Put it up. He called it earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. He is teaching the visible and the invisible. Moses. The first thing he said about light and darkness was heavenly. Light and darkness in the heavens. Heavenly. Non-material. So in this instance, he is teaching about mankind using the concept of heaven and earth. Heaven now looks as a dominion principle. Heaven now looks as the overriding principle because Shemaim's above what you might not see, but you can see Shemaim's. It is the Shamayims. So, you won't get lost. He now talks about the creation of the physical heaven. And the physical earth. And they were all in the same place. He says heaven and earth. Then he now talks about the, that heaven as light and darkness. And waters, night and day. Then he now talks about you know, what he still calls heaven and earth. So, it is Moses' language of explaining man. Because we have said earlier, 
that Jesus used Moses' terms. So Jesus' heaven will be two. Atmospheric and spiritual. Atmospheric and spiritual. Jesus' earth will also be about man. Atmospheric and man's actions. Atmospheric and man's actions. That's exactly how Moses wrote it. So that means the first chapter of Genesis has an explanation in there. Now pay attention. Light. John calls that light the light of all men. Moses said light. Then John explained that what Moses meant by light was that light was the light of men. Then Jesus now said, I am the light. Jesus now said, I am the light. Then John now says, all the prophets bear witness of that light. Then Paul now says, light out of darkness. Look at the progression. Did you follow that progression? Let me give you again the sequence. Moses said light. John calls that light, light of men. Then Jesus said, that light of men that John is talking about, I am the light. Then John now says, all the prophets from the beginning of time till himself bore witness of that light. Then Paul in the epistles now says, God commanded the light to shine out of darkness by shining in our heart. By shining in our hearts. So Moses wrote salvation. And he wrote that heaven as it were. As the heart of a man. Where there can be darkness. And there can be light. And that heart of man. Where there is darkness and light. Is right here on earth. Glory. Are you still here? Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. The word host there is a Hebrew term used for an army. Most likely angels. So he says the heavens and earth. Look at that Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. Let me read a bit of it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them next verse and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made three and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made moses wrote this at a time when man needed salvation listen everybody genesis was Moses' teaching ministry to the children of Israel in need of an exodus. They were in bondage. And Moses was telling them of God's plan to take them out of bondage to a promised land. So Genesis is God's promise of an exodus. Genesis is God's promise of an exodus. So Moses wrote it at a time when man needed salvation. Moses was not writing a step-by-step -step account of what he was seeing. Moses was using creation to explain salvation. He was using creation to explain salvation. What God finished in heaven and earth will be the people of God. What God finished. You understand? Those who have entered into his rest. He called them in the seventh day. He called them in the seventh day. 
Then the writer of Hebrews expanded the verbiage. He said, it's not a Sunday. The writer of Hebrews says, that day of rest is the day of the believing ones. We that believe have entered. So the day of rest is the day of the believing ones. Or did you remember Paul calls it the day of salvation? The day of salvation. He's not talking about a particular day, but a period of time. The day of salvation is not a Sunday. Those who had believed and have entered into rest. So when he was telling them to keep the day under the law, when Moses gave them as a law, okay, he was saying to them, this is the day of the people of God. When they remember God's finished work in man, it was not finished in Adam. God's work was finished in Christ. Not in Adam. That's exactly what Moses is writing here. Look at that Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. How did they watch? These are the generations. Heaven and earth don't have generations. For heaven and earth to have generations means man is the heaven and the earth. That is why there is generations. I don't know if I'm teaching here. So the heaven and the earth here in Moses' communication is referring to man using creation to teach salvation. The word generation is the word toledot. T-O-L-E-D-O-T-H. Toledot. Used for genealogy. Only for men. It is only used for men. Generation is never used for anything else other than for men by Moses. And he used it 27 times. It is used for families. Tole dot. Tole dot. Moses used it 27 times for families. It's derived from the Hebrew word yalad. Yalad. Y-A-L-A-D Used for families In other words Moses explains heaven and earth as man Generations Toledot Is not used for trees It's used for men So therefore Moses uses man on two planes In the natural And in the supernatural that is the term heaven and earth. The visible and the invisible. Where does the light shine? Or where does light shine? Light shines in the invisible. That's the light of salvation. That's the light of Genesis 1, 2, and 3. That's the heaven and the earth. And both heaven and earth are not miles apart. They are just explanations of different ways by which man functions. Earthly, heavenly, supernatural, natural. Earthly, heavenly, Supernatural, natural. So therefore, by using the word Shamayims from the word Shane, it means that Moses started by saying that the control room in the earth is not visible. It's invisible. And he uses Shamayims to explain it. Shamayims.
Bereshit. Elohim. Shamayims. Heavens. That what we see doesn't come from what we see. That what we see comes from what we don't see. Just like you look into the heavens, you can't see. So he now uses that to typify operations in man that can't be seen. What we see, what we don't see. Look at this. We see a physical man, but the authority that that man releases is unseen. The control room of a man is not seen with the eye. You know, there's a movie I watched. You know, one, one short boy. Very short. Very short. His friend went and looked for trouble. Very tall guy. So they beat his friend. Then his friend said, I will go and bring my master. Since you beat me, you are in big trouble. I will go and bring my master. So he went and brought this short boy. The boy reached him here. The one they beat. He's the master of the beating one. Reached the beating one here. So they are coming as if he's coming with Junior. So the person that beat him looked at him and said, <laughs> Did you go to bring your grandchild to come and fight me? So he insulted him. And the little boy said, is it me you're talking to like that? Is it me you're talking to like that? The man said, if I slap you, they will not find the pieces of your body. Me? He said, yes. He said, ah, I will finish you. So the big guy that beat up the other guy now came to this small guy in an attempt to slap him. The boy just did him. He went up the sky and hit the floor. Duma. The little boy came and put his leg on him and said, next time, don't you try. He told the other guy, let's go. The control room <laughs> of the short man is not visible. He's operating from a heaven. Now that's just a that's just a low level illustration I'm trying to use. But what I'm saying is, how many of you remember that heaven is a control room in the earth? You remember that? So, heaven therefore will be the control room where things are controlled. What you can call the Genesis principle. There is a Genesis principle that is how it happened. And this is why Paul will now say things like Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to three you are the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins next verse wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh so he's the prince of the power of the air or what paul is saying is that the prince of the power of the new man is the spirit that walketh. So there's a spirit at work. There's an immaterial reality. There's a principle at work in the man in darkness. Just like there is the spirit at work in the believer in the light. The spirit of adoption. Let me not be in a hurry. According to the prince of the power of the air. Now look at the same figuratives. Air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Three things. In. It works in. Air. Spirit. Figuratives. In a spirit. 
Then chapter 6 verse 12 of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high. World. Rulers of darkness. Of this world. They rule darkness. Darkness where? In the heart of a man that is not born again. And the man is where? In this world. Wickedness. In the heavenlies. Did you observe? He talks about darkness of this world then wickedness in high and the heavenly is referring to is where huh? Huh? against spiritual wickedness in high places where is the high places in man wickedness is in man the wickedness he's referring to here when he talks about high or heavenlies is in man. Just like Jesus when he said the heavens were opened. It means the invisible operations in the earth was opened. And those invisible operations on the earth are where? In man. The weather in the atmosphere physically controls what happens on earth. The heavenlies in man controls what happens in that man physically. Is it getting clear? Is it getting clear? Because heaven and earth are in the same place. So when you see heaven, or when you say heaven, it's a shorthand for mankind. Because that is his sphere of authority. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 10. If thou shalt hearken, I love Moses, look at the way he will coin this thing. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul. Next verse. For this commandment which I commanded this day, it is not hidden from thee. Neither is it far off. Next verse. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Next verse. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee. So nigh that is in your mouth and is in your heart that thou mayest do it. Are we getting clearer? You know, Moses is such a huge player with words. He's a wordsmith, man. Moses is a wordsmith. Now, he uses heaven and earth to explain heaven and earth to man. Look at verse 15. Same Deuteronomy 30. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. You didn't see that. Life and good, death and evil. Look at verse 19. Same chapter, 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life. Is the same man who talked about the tree of life. Choose life. Question. Who is in heaven and earth? Man. So he now says, I say this to you today. Heaven and earth, therefore, will refer to man's sphere of authority. 
See how brother Paul interpreted it. Romans 10, 6 to 8. He interpreted the same thing from Moses' theology. Romans 10, 6 to 8. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Kai, I love brother Paul, man. I love brother Paul. You guys are not seeing because you're busy writing. Put it up so that we can see it. Go back to verse. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I love this guy. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not where. Say not where. Say not where. Who shall ascend into heaven to bring Christ down from heaven? Next verse. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Next verse. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So he calls that life the goodness of God. I said before you life and good. Death and evil. So the life is the goodness of God. So Moses speaks his words. Life and death. Remember, he is the same person who wrote Genesis chapter 2. He calls it the tree of life relating to Christ. Then he calls death the absence of Christ. Life, Christ, death when Christ is absent. Because he, he wrote the two texts, you know. I said before. So Moses uses that to talk about God giving man a choice. And he had to write that because he was talking to a Jewish audience. That had the law in their minds. But Paul wrote the same thing in this way. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Not death by God. Death by sin. That's Romans 5.12. So, one man, sin entered. He didn't say God gave man a choice. He said, God gave man life. God didn't give you a choice. God gave you life. You rejecting the life God gave. When God's life is rejected by you, what comes as an absence of that God's life? What you have created by yourself, by rejecting the life of God, is death. So death is not a creation of God. Rather, death is the absence of God. God gave only life. God never gave you two things. He gave you just life. So, because God gave only life, Man rejecting God's life created man's choice. Man rejecting God's life created man's choice. So God's justice and judgment is not God saying, if you get this, fine. If you don't, I will do this to you. No. God's judgment is to discern for you the implication of what you will do. We can say it very well like. Man therefore. Was not saved from God's wrath. Because. There is no wrath. In God. Man was saved from man's wrath. Man was saved from a self-destruct button. God gives life. Holy life. So Moses' tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
is Moses' verbiage. And Jesus refined it for us. Because he's not talking to men who are unbelieving in their hearts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Next verse. God, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Next verse. Glory to God. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not... The absence of God is condemnation. He's condemned because he did not believe. He doesn't mention God in the unbelief. He mentions God in the absence. You did not believe, so God left. The absence of God is where condemnation and darkness came. So Jesus refines that for us. He doesn't attack Moses. He only explains Moses' teachings to us. And this became brother Paul's Uranius. That's the word heaven in the Greek. Or Euphoranius. Things of heaven. So in Christ's explanation therefore. He gives clarity to the word spoken before him. So in other words, Jesus had a way he explained. His heaven is God's heaven. His heaven is what Moses was passing across. Because Moses oftentimes used heaven materially to explain heaven immaterially. I'm almost done. Jesus didn't teach that. Jesus talked with the heaven in the material to explain the kingdom or the authority of the invisible in the visible. Whatever things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever things you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because that's where you are. So since you're on earth, you operate heaven and earth from earth. In other words, he brings the two together in one place. Just like Moses did in creation. So Paul did not in any way differ from the things that Jesus said. You will see as we get to the next session that Jesus talked about the heaven, the Oranios, and Paul majored on the Euphoranios. Jesus stayed with heaven, Paul stayed with the things that are there. And they were all within the earth sphere. Listen carefully. The reason for the heavens is the earth. The reason for the heavens is the earth. The reason for the earth is man. The reason for man is fellowship. The reason for the heavens is the earth. The reason for the earth is man. The reason for man is fellowship with God. E.W. Kenyon made that clear. So brother Paul never differed from what Jesus taught. And Jesus never differed from what Moses taught. So what Moses taught was explained by Jesus in parables and taught by Paul in doctrine. Is it clear? I mean what Moses taught was explained by Jesus in parables and taught by Paul in the epistles as doctrine. And in the doctrine of heaven... There is no distance. There is no travel. The man that is born again is born into heaven. He lives in heaven and he remains in heaven. And after a while, on the day of resurrection, he wears his heavenly body so that him and the living can be brought together to a gathering. Because the living, mortality shall put on immortality. So those that died also will wear their heavenly body so that there is a coming together unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. Praise God. Are you blessed tonight? Get on your feet. That's all I've got for you. Glory! Glory! Well, get on your feet tonight. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm in heaven right now. In Christ. Christ is in me. Right now. I have that reality. 
at work in me right now. I am light. I am light. I'm the light of the world. I'm a city set on a hill that cannot be healed. Lift your hands and begin to give thanks to God for these realities. Greton, <laughs> 